one. So you don't have a Titanic collection? No. Do you want one? Not really. No. I feel like that's kind of like a little obsessive. Okay. Like I'm going to build a shrine. I bring a girl over and she's like, what's all that? And it's like, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. And I'm a Galway girl. Galway girl. Ed I've been living in a Galway <laughs> world. No, no. no. <laughs> and this here is Frank. What's up, Frank? I like the outfit. Hi. Um, what's up? It's Friday. Holy, holy, holy Toledo. <laughs> Do you know Toledo is a place? Toledo, Ohio. Yeah. Isn't that what we used to talk about all the time? No, we talked about it's in Kansas. Topeka. No, no. it's called. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, this is going to kill me. It's the heroin capital of the world. Apparently, is I it thought heroin? beat out Ken, Ken, uh, Ken, yeah, it Kensington. Was. It beat out, yeah, it's oof. Okay, by the end of the show, we'll get <laughs> okay, it. Okay. Okay. Um, what's up, guys? It is Friday. It is a good day to be alive. First Friday in November. And, first um, Friday, which so many people first Friday. have events, but they were canceled for COVID. So I'm mm. wondering if it, everything is opening again. It's big for the art scene. Yeah. Uh, down in the Philadelphia Museum of Art, you get free admission, I believe. And mm. then on top of that, all of the local galleries have sort of yeah come in, have wine a drink. Yeah, yeah, a little wine and cheese. Check yeah. out the art. I'd like to be wealthy enough one day um, to get into art. To buy it, you yeah. Because like, I, I was going to say that the openings are free. Just go around and pick up the cheese. I would love to be wealthy <laughs> enough to be able to go to a cheese tasting. Um, no, I, I I would like to have nice art. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? My dad had a very, very big art collection. He did. The biggest I've seen. And no photos of it, though. No. And, um, but he loved... Wichita. <laughs> Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> Wichita. Got it. I Shut was up. listening to you. Shut up. No, I know. Um, he... He was just a simple man. You know, we're not talking about, like you said, when you were wealthy, but he would go on eBay mm-hmm. and he would just search out paintings that, number one, he liked. Yeah. And then number two, it was in his price range. Yeah. And then he would bid on them. Some he would lose, some he would he would win, but he had such a nice eclectic collection. Yes. Eclectic. That's a good word. Word of the day. Um, yeah. Like art. Uh, not huge into the modern art, but there's- So you a- don't like MoMA? Mm-hmm. Museum of Modern Art in New York City. No. You went there? I did. Yeah. I like I like uh, How do I put this? I used to hate modern art mm-hmm. and then I I was a art major at, in college and so or I did a lot of art history and learning about modern art made me appreciate it. So now I appreciate modern art, but I still it's not my cup of tea. And what you learned is that it's not meant to portray something it's meant to evoke emotion right and i think when you look at it like that like how does this painting make me feel rather than what is this like i feel like and so before i'm like i could do that i could do whatever a red red dot on on a white canvas but it's a flag of something that's oh yeah japan Japan. (laughs) um once once you look at it through the lens of you're not supposed to be looking at it like it's a renaissance painting you know um well first of all you talk about your art life a lot your art educational life a lot and um we just have to shout out miss c miss c my high school art teacher she taught me everything i know i was never an art student really no um and so i joined electives back in high school just for an easy a and quickly i learned two things quickly i learned it was not an easy a and Mm. art is is you would think like, well, if I just draw something, I'll, I'll be good. There's so much that goes into it. And on top of that, um, my skill never was, you know, among the best. Right. But my appreciation for the whole scene. Yeah. Um, is what kept me doing it. And she was a great, great. She was a she great. She is, I'm guessing, still still teaching. S- still kicking. Great teacher. Um, interesting. When you talk about this modern art, it kind of reminds me of our One Word Wednesday where if if we say like we're going to do a, a podcast on spoon and we're going to find a spiritual significance you know people yes. would say like that's crazy and it's like it's not we can get you there and i, I look at modern art like that like mm. oh it's just a painting of a spoon that's not anything yeah. it's like actually let's actually, appreciate it let's look a little deeper let's dig a little deeper yeah amen to that but this isn't the art podcast this is the christian podcast today is november 5th it is yeah Today's November 5th, um, and it it's is... Libra season. Le- is it? I don't know. It is Love Your Red Hair Day. Oh. 
So now we I have I was to, almost born with red hair. Well, not almost born. You were you were <laughs> you were actually I was successfully born. <laughs> born with red hair and um I believe that there's some stories that you yelled out in fear. No, I did not. The day I was born. I love redheads and we have redheads so we <laughs> shout out Lauren. We're going to shout out Tia. Um I don't know. Oh, well my, I have cousins and your dad has has cousins but um are actual It's funny cuz they're American cousins and um the ones in Ireland, I don't think we have redheads over there. Black Irish. Love your red hair. Day, you were born with red hair and I I jumped for joy right off the bed and um and then it turned blonde. And then it turned brown. Way to go, Spencer. Way to go, <laughs> follicles. Way to go. Your hair's not brown by the way. It depends who I'm standing next to. Well, I think. my look at your hair. Come on. My son is a hairdresser and he would tell you that it's 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 ash blonde or something. There's Well, you know what? Here's my thing about my hair. I think the only people that truly have blonde hair are like the Scandinavians. Yeah. Um, and my hair is as blonde as a normal person's. Like right. my my hair, I feel like is the hair that when girls have, they keep it blonde by dyeing it. Like yeah. But as a as a manly guy, I just let it do whatever it wants to do. Right. Well, but, manly men can dye their hair. Yeah. As a as lazy a, as a lazy <laughs> poor person <laughs> yeah a lazy poor person with zero self-care no but um yeah like, I, I got you know i think my brother he's like jet black hair yeah if he dyed his hair blonde like a natural blonde not like bleach blonde right it would look a lot more unnatural oh yeah because like, i i can yeah. i will grow still blonde facial hair right my eyebrows are light so yeah there are different shades of blonde um i had a friend in trinidad and her little both so her, my little boy and her little boy both had blonde hair um it was totally different. Yours always retained that kind of golden reddish. Yeah. And he had like white blonde yeah, hair. Yeah. Um, so it's the same thing with eyes. Uh, we say we have blue eyes, but. One blue this way, one blue that way. Your brother. <laughs> your brother was working the other day at his job and, and two girls came in and they told him he had gray eyes and he said, I have blue eyes. And they said, no, you have gray. So it's just. In the eye of the beholder, as art you is. You know what? My hair is sort of modern art in that way. It's like, <laughs> don't try to figure out what color my hair is, but what emotion does it evoke? Yes. Mm. Ain't that That could be your pickup line. <laughs> what emotion does my hair evoke? Fear. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> Angst. So that's um, November 5th, uh, Love Your Red Hair Day. Love Your Red Hair Day. So if you have red hair out and there. And Connor, our, f- our, not, you know, our friend as well. Our red-headed friend, but he's just our friend who has red hair. What does that mean? Well, because you can, you don't want. I feel like you're never supposed to put labels in front of people. Oh, you're right. So we're not labeling him the red-haired Connor. It's yeah. just Connor. Well, no. So when I said he's our red-headed friend. It's <gasps> like no, he's our friend who has red hair. Yeah. It's not like he's yeah, not. We have he's, a list. He's not our our token ginger. <laughs> yeah, we have a list, and it's like okay, we need a curly-headed friend. We already yeah. have our bald friend over here. It's um, he is our friend who suffers with red hair. <laughs> Stop it! I love red hair, and I love Connor. <laughs> Yes. Um, okay. It is fun Friday. That's why we're being a little wacky today. And um, I think we should discuss the elephant in the room or the... Frank? <laughs> the, the, the the big old boat in the room. The big old boat. Why is this boat on the table? Because it is um, show and tell Friday. Show and tell Friday. Yes. The, the, the segment you never asked for. Right. So we're going to do show and tell. I'll go first. Okay. And it's it's show and tell, swell or hell. Whoa! <laughs> so if you like it, thumbs up. That's uh, I thought swell. like I thought your something you had was about like hell. No, because swell. No, like, like, like if you don't like swell. what I have, go to hell. We throw it. Oh. and we break it. I don't want to break this. No, I'm not going to break it either. I just was trying. You know me. I just love rhyming words. Yeah, you should have been a poet. Uh, Doctor Seuss. All right, so what do you got from for, for us today? All right, I don't know. Do you want to take it to the camera and then... Take it to the course. And then come Daddy back. Daddy Bay. Because mine's way smaller than um than Spencer's. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. All right, Spencer. It's, yeah, okay, it came into focus. Thank you. That is a, um, I, I want to say plaster. It's a piece of art. We're talking about art. This is my... <clears throat> it's going to fall and break, and I treasure it. This is, um, so you've seen it, so I guess I don't have to keep holding it, but this is um, a plaster. And so, like, what would you say? Do you think they carved it? 
I don't know the origins. I don't know the artist. Okay, but it was made by hand. And the reason I know that is because there's an old paper sticker on the back. It says made by hand in the Glendalo Studio, County Wicklow, Ireland. Oh. This was given to me by my brother, Patrick. Okay. And um, it's really intricate and I just love it. It's such a little, it's a little, um, a little village. Not a village. It's just the one house, but it reminds yeah. me of a village. And um, so I'm not really from Galway. I, I said I was a Galway girl. Yeah. Um, I'm not from Ireland at all. I'm Irish from, but I was not born there. Yes. We, but we're, we're born, following. <laughs> um, uh, we're from the West, right? Your mother and my, her family. My family, my bloodline. Yes. We're from a lot of places because I'm not sure about my dad and stuff like that. But anyway, we're not, I'm not that. I'm a not lot gonna, of places in Ireland. Not that I, in all the places in Ireland. Well, I mean, if you say a lot of places, <laughs> then right. you might be one of those people that You're are right. like, um, English, I'm just getting, French. It's, it's show and tell and I'm getting so on. When, when, sometimes when you show some of your deepest, darkest, <laughs> darkest, <laughs> I'm almost dark about that, but. One of your, your, your most valued crazy. possessions. Yeah. It's a little overwhelming. It's you're sh- you're showing a part of your soul. You know, like it's showing hell in school, you know? And it's yeah. like... I used to just bring in things I didn't care about. I brought a rock. Yeah. Yeah, I'd forget. Bring up a pen. My so, shoe. <laughs> my left shoe. So we're not... um Not that I know of, we're not from County Wicklow. County Wicklow literally is below Dublin and it's on the sea on the East Coast. Oh, ah, so East on Side. We, opposite. West Side. <laughs> right. But... um. I just love it because um, from the stories my mom would tell me, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, people are always putting down gang members. Yeah. It is kind of impressive the way they no, have control over their hands. Like I was realizing I can't even cross my no. two middle. F- let me get it. Maybe that's the beginning um, you see initiation that- of joining a gang. <laughs> I wonder. Like, is how it, flexible it, you are. Is there like a sitting at home period where like you're working oh, no. on. And what if you get arthritis in the meantime? That should be like a, a movie. Or not a movie, like a documentary, Gang Members with Arthritis. Okay. So it's, um, <laughs> I don't know what the date is and I don't, there was no reason for him to give it to me. And um, I just like it because it reminds me, like I said, of the cottage my mom talked about. It has an iron pot over the fire. Mm. It has a spinning wheel, which like from Rumpelstiltskin, I don't believe she had that. But um. And it does have a cross, a Catholic, a Christian. Okay, sorry. to bring in a little bit of the uh, a Christian cross there. Nice. So it's really nice and um, very simple. And you know what? I never hung it because I'm afraid it's going to crash to the ground. That's fair. But that's my show and tell. Well, that's very good. And small and puny and not important because this is what I got, guys. Let me show you. Oh, you could. They could see it. They could see it from there. We need a compilation of me me saying Spencer no. Because that right there, folks, is a replica of the White Star Lines RMS Titanic. Let me repeat that for you. That is a replica of the White Star Lines RMS Titanic. A little known boat, a little known ship. <laughs> a little known ship um, that I love. I love this so much. I'll give you a little backstory. Okay. The Titanic um, set the seas in 19... I'm not going to tell you about the history. Ah. I want to tell you about the movie. Oh, talk about art. Talk about modern art. Mm. Visual. That was a... Visual art. There's three hours of pure the art. The bell really rings. Oh, wow. It's my favorite movie of all time. And ever since then, I've been in love with the Titanic. Before the show started, I was saying we need to go to the museum in Tennessee. We will. And we will... Beautiful. We'll bring you with us. And so I was gifted this in sort of an interesting way. So this is a one of one, one of a kind. You'll never find this anywhere. My buddy from um, who lives in Bristol, not England, uh, his mom was cleaning out the house. And so he was just sending into a group chat, hey, we're moving to Alaska. Does anyone want some of these things? One of them was this. And he didn't even send it into the group chat. He texted me directly and was like, Spencer, I know you're always talking about Titanic. It's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, I have this. I'm like, yes, how did you get this? Turns out his mom um, had a suitor. Like she was, she's a single. And she had a suitor at one point who um, was a artist. And to, yeah, show so his, intricate. to show his desire to court her. Wow. He created this. He, you know, No one's ever done that for me. No. You know what? And she didn't end up being with him. So, but the nice thing about that, I mean, I'm sure he ended up happy. I'm sure he found someone who appreciates his 
dioramas. And this found someone who appreciates it well, as well. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the mom didn't want it. The mom right. says, it just reminds me of old Carl Longbottom. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the kid didn't want it. He's like, I don't really care about um, Titanic. And now it's found a house with me. And I am in love with it. I think it is just the bee's knees. I imagine something of this. Like this one, you know, I, it still needs to be cleaned and like I can like fix it up a bit. But imagine what, what like buy if, if someone was selling this. Oh gosh, maybe instead of show and tell, it should be show and sell. No, if you're interested. No, no, no. Over my price. dead body, <laughs> over my dead body. But it brings me a lot of joy. Do Some, do, do let me ask you if if usually um, model sets bring you joy. Like, do you like to make submarines and airplanes no. and? So you've never had any interest? No. So it's the just the art of it. It's just the fact that it's. Do the you Titanic. have other pieces of Titanic art? I have a piece of the Titanic. You do? No, oh. I don't, you're not allowed to touch the Titanic. Oh, I wish. <laughs> I would have believed it. Yeah, yeah. You can get easy. a piece of like a saint's, you know, yeah, kerchief. Um, uh, but no, um, this is this is it. This is one my one. So you don't piece have of... a Titanic collection? No. Do you want one? Not really. No. I feel like that's kind of like a little obsessive. Okay. Like I'm going to build a shrine. I bring a girl over and she's like, what's all that? And it's like, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I think that's what scared away. In the old days, I think that's what scared away my friend's mom. <laughs> you're right. In the old days, um, there used to be, and even before me, but I would hear it like on shows and stuff and it would say, come back to my studio to see my etchings or something like that. And, and it was like, I don't know even what it meant. I think yeah. it's like um, your sketch. Maybe it was sketching. So I thought it was etchings. But anyway, so you'll say, come back to see my... I want you to come back to see my Titanic collection. Yeah, come see my Titanic collection. I love it. And I think you could do a stop motion film with it. You know what? Sometimes I just sit here and I just imagine myself walking the old uh, the old front deck. And I imagine just drowning in the ice cold water. Some Someone just told me they're going One to... <laughs> At the Titanic Museum. Sorry to cut you off. No, it's fine. Um, there's this little... like I don't even know if I'll be able to find a picture of it. But... It's a little like tub thing that like just has like this circle above it and it is the temperature that the water was and you put your hands in and a timer starts going to no, see how long you can no. keep, and like usually it's like 20 seconds and you're ah you are kidding yeah. that's a really fun place yeah really fun place you have to go i definitely how do you know so much about it you just read about it i just sometimes i just sit here and just imagine so i was on the titanic all the lifeboats are gone it's just me and the band tell me was there a pastor on here that prayed for the people Yes. Really? I don't know, but in the movie there was. In the was. movie? Because I can't and remember. You know what he was in the movie there was, and do you know what he was um, reciting? I'm sure you could guess. Twenty third song. Twenty third song. Really? Yeah. Even though I walk through the vet. That was the other. What uh, else? Some something else you just asked, and I said yes, but it was from the movie that my knowledge was from, and not from the truth. Hmm. Really? Yeah. I forget though. Well, you remembered Wichita, so. You oh no! You know it's because I didn't even say it. Doing good. I didn't even say it, but um to go with your ireland thing um so it set sail in england but um i think the irish are the ones who built it only reason i say that is because in the movie the irish guy who they're friends with mm -hmm. um the fabrizio the italian was like it's an english ship no and then the irish guy is like no twenty-two thousand irishmen built the ship big irish hands yeah it's an irish ship He's English, no? Oh, it was built in Ireland. 15,000 Irishmen built this ship. Solid as a rock. Big Irish hand. That's a good accent, number one. Number two, I, I can see why they probably downplayed that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I think up. the English did it. The English did it. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows who made it? But yeah, that's my... Uh... I love it. And I think we should try to put it in water. No, it's really heavy. It's definitely not um, buoyant. Penny buoyant. Pack. Buoyant. Penny pack. I, mean, I bet it would float, but I think it would float sideways. Um. Yeah, we won't do that. I was just joking because it also looks very gl like glued maybe at parts. Yeah. I, that's the fun thing about it. It's like there's a lot of little broken pieces because I imagine it was made like 10, 15 years ago. But um, you've had it for 10 years. That's true. I must have. So I got it when I was a freshman in college, which was seven years ago. There's even glass here for the for the for the the captain. The captain he went down with the ship. There's a lot of detail. I, I hope he had fun making it, though. I bet he did. Yeah. I, I, and you know, I, I I was talking to somebody about gifts. So gifts are my love language. We had a whole episode on love languages. Gifts with a T. Yeah. Yeah. Not, Sometimes some people think you're saying the word GIF. Like the well, funny I, if I ever was saying that, I'd be saying GIF. So. That's the peanut butter. 
Are you one of those people? <laughs> Are you? You taught me to say GIF, but when I'm not around you, I say GIF. Cause Why? Because that's, that's what people say. No, because you, you know the one person who doesn't say that? The person who made the, the person who in, who d- 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 invented gifs. Gifs. And so you know if if I if you ever meet somebody and they say, "Hey, my name is this," and you're like, "That's not your name. Look how it's spelled." And they're like, "Well, it's my name. I can have it be whatever it want. I want it to be." Yeah. Um. Now you made me lose my train of thought. You said you 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 want to have gifs are your love language. Gifs are <laughs> presents are my love language. Not presents. Like the presence of someone. That's a different love language. G-I-F-T-S are my love language. Um, Present. Yeah, we just did that. Okay. And I was talking to someone uh, yesterday about the... They were... They had broke something and uh, someone close to them got them a new one. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I felt so bad. Like, oh, like I, I, I could have gotten it myself. Like, And what I was explaining and why I stand by gifts as love language is I think it equally is a good feeling for the person like oh yeah it, a, a lot of the time you know you might feel bad about receiving something but it's like you know what i'm saying you're bringing joy by right you bring joy to the person for them sharing being able it. to yeah share yeah. it like, and look at this guy you know he is an artist yeah and how many 15 years later someone is talking about I wish he signed it or something i wonder yeah. i would like to see we'll find him one day if you know the person who made the titanic boat in pennsylvania message us message us and we will not give it back, but... No. We just wanted to know about the guy. Yeah, we'll just give you a shout out. Probably doing real well for yourself nowadays. Do you think you could do it? No. No. Do you think it was a... Do you think it was a um a kit? No. Not at all. No. It's just All his, of it's like hand cut. His idea. Because like, even some of it is like raw in right. the sense of like, I'm not downplaying it being... No, it's better that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that's my, um, that's my show and tell. So, any, any Christian things about owning materialistic items and putting value in them? Well, um, when I looked up show and tell um, on the internet, Bible show and tell or whatever, they, I think there's a show and tell Bible. I don't, I don't even know what that means, but um, oh, for children and a lot, they had a lot of ideas for doing a Christian or a religious show and tell, even a Jewish or whatever your religion is, that you would bring in super religious items. So, you would show your rosary beads you would show um maybe something that uh, a jewish believer had brought back from the holocaust or you know any kind of thing that's religious but as you know with us we do anything we want <laughs> we do whatever we want i'm thinking we could use the crow for a sort of um like a horror type you know this kind oh, of uh, <laughs> like it's like a godzilla but a crow <laughs> right <laughs> oh my god can you imagine yeah that would work even, <laughs> even the frog would work Okay, stop putting things on top of my Titanic. I like it. Oh, no. He could be like that thing on the front. Oh, like for the old like uh, yeah, Viking like ships. Usually a mermaid or something. Funny you should say Viking because the um, back to my show and tell. The adorable Irish village piece. Um, this is from Wicklow. I told you that, right? County Wicklow. Yeah. And uh, that derives from the, uh, the Old Norse... Norse name for Vikings Meadow. Yeah, but we don't like that. Why? The Vikings are the ones who chased all the people out of Ireland. Aren't they? I don't really know my history. But Me neither. Wasn't like the Illuminated Manuscripts what kept oh, Christendom alive because the monks were in the hills of, the, of England and Ireland. And when the Vikings came, they would run and flee. So why would they keep that name, I wonder? I don't know. It's why I'm so good at running in confrontation. It's because my ancestors have done it for years. Preserving the Bible. I think we have Viking ancestors. What? We're completely Irish, as says the DNA. DNA is only good for the amount of information they've accumulated. Yeah. So it's a little... People are lean on it a little too much, I find. Well, yeah. And also with that being... Exactly. Because if DNA was 100% and you believe in modern science... Um, as least as where we're at technologically, it would say we're all from Africa, right? Like they, that's like where the origin of people right now is being said. Right. And so there is a certain stopping point that DNA tells you. That's mm-hmm. like, okay, we can see all of these people with this DNA were in, up in Ireland, but it's not telling you. And the reason they were there is because there were Vikings that came over. Right. Like things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always think my sister Kellyanne is. Um, it's just because she's tall and blonde, isn't it? Well, yeah, 
like she she seems such such a Viking um, roots to me. It's How tall so, is she? She's six two. And I feel uh, like not, not to always, not to bring up height, but you know I think it's important to differentiate a tall her height. For being, it's not like because oh, you're, right. you're like five seven. So oh, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's five nine, and then someone's like, "I'm not five nine, and I'm just Italian." Right. It's, no, she's six two in a family of well, my dad's family is tall. Um, the guys, but not the girls. But but my my actual family in Ireland, they like they don't break five nine. Yeah. So I think they're Vikings. Um, Hinga dinga Durgan <laughs> horns. Are you allowed to say that? I don't. Hinga dinga Durgan, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I love that funny show though on on Netflix, which is called Vikings. <laughs> you remember it? I do. Yeah, that was funny. Um, yeah. So show and tell. Um, Frank, do you have anything? No, <laughs> he doesn't. Frank, I didn't think about it. Frank, he's just it? thinking about tonight. He's well, going out tonight. Where's he going? Um, I don't know. Some first club? Friday. Yeah, it's first. Oh no, he he's gonna go and just like steal the wine and like knock over the cheese. <gasps> he turns in a little bit of a menace on the weekend. Um, I know we have issues with Frank. You just reminded me. So you 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 would like to buy art, but um, how would you feel about being? So it's first Friday, and I've been to a lot of um art walks, um, different places yeah. on first Fridays, and the the artist. You kind of hang out there yeah. and the people are milling about and they're talking, they're looking and talking about your art and some are buying, but most are just looking because the fun of a first Friday is that you're not being hounded or, you know, com- people aren't looking for commissions. They just are trying to get awareness of their stu- of their um, art gallery. Yes, yes. How would you feel to be the guy? Not good. Um, Me neither. I was an art student. Wait, did you guys know? Um, and... Just for like a, for a few like uh, events, like on days we'd go to art festivals, and we would like run tables and stuff. And all the students like that were in my class, you'd make something, but it wasn't like any showpiece stuff. It was just like one of. But right. I remember like just thinking when I'm being there, there's a lot of people that don't appreciate the value of art. And I did my whole senior project on how to value art and how mm. how hard it is and how much goes into it. And so I know when you just look at a painting and say three hundred dollars, you kick rocks. Right. You're not Picasso. Right. It's like you don't understand the time and the material yeah. and, and the care that goes into it. But um, with that being said, I think it's a skill in itself um to be able to market yourself and be strong with your price. Because at the time, if someone said, "I'll give you two septa tokens and high five for your art," I would say, "Yeah, oh, yeah." Like, well, you it, don't it, it, have it, to. I mean, the, the person who if someone takes your stuff for the gallery, yeah, um, they will be the ones trying to sell it. Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm not. But I was just saying, I don't want to just have the critique. Yeah, like I don't want yeah. to be standing there when. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about uh, making a little soup business, mm-hmm. a business of soup, soup for the soul. Um, that's not the name of it, but um, it's already taken, really. Yeah, ah, uh, I had it. So I'm thinking of a name right now for this business. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys will know about it later. And I came up with the perfect name. It's already taken. Oh yeah, you, you want to hear it? It was going to be the the, the golden ladle, golden ladle soups. I love it. Isn't it perfect? It is. And you know who who owns the the rights to golden Campbell's. ladles? You wish. I would. Oh no, no, I don't know why you'd wish. It would be better. It's some niche like you can only buy it at the restaurant store oh. of a bone broth brand. A bone broth brand. Bone broth is pretty trendy, so it'll probably be out of business soon. I hope um, they sell the... Uh... Two things I want to say before we, before before the time runs out. Wait. Oh. I didn't finish my thought. Oh, go ahead. Just remember me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to finish the thought real quickly. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the soup guy. It's all I know. It's all I care about. And I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, while wow, this, this business um, model is, is going forward, I'm like... Ah, it's gonna be tough. Like sitting and like I, tr- I would 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 uh, die on the hill of my soup being good. But when someone else is eating know, in front of me, I know uh, it's a little bit of a terrifying thought. But it's definitely a skill that should be worked on. Go. Two things. One, we can't talk about artists and and good artists and natural talent artists and artists who should be in a gallery without mentioning Bridget. Yes, Bridget. Your cousin, my cousin, who's a fantastic artist. Fantastic artist, always has been. Remember back when in, when I was saying. In those classes, I wasn't a natural artist, but I loved the art scene. She was, I, w- I would say the opposite, but she loved the scene as well. She was naturally gifted and perfected her craft. And still to this day, 
does um and because of her none of us have confidence to do our own (laughs) it was you know what um in a family that loved like music she was the person who had to hit every note right and then make like okay well i guess i'll appreciate music instead of trying to sing and so thank you for that other thing is another cousin neve who, if if anyone's so inclined to pray, we're all sen- we're sending her lots of love and support and good energy wishes and um, just bolstering her spirit because she's going through a medical journey. Medical journey, and we will all be praying for her on this first Friday and every day to come until she is better. So, with that being said, it is Friday, so go out and don't do anything I wouldn't do. And uh, if you do do things I wouldn't do. Pray for forgiveness. <laughs> we'll see you on Wednesday. Have a great weekend. Stay blessed. Keep on being spiritual and, and growing in God. That's it. Go go make yourself a Titanic. Go visit Ireland. Go visit the Vikings. I don't care. The show's over. Get on out of here. Peace. <laughs>